right, so we have a small group today. It's our second conversation with Andy Dobo about the hero's journey. And we're talking specifically about dreams today. And um, what you, you, we're, we're gonna do it informal. So if you want to turn your videos on your morning, welcome to, hey, Anthony. Hey, Anthony. Um, hey, Lindsay. Lindsay. Um, so we, we are going to talk about specifically about dreams. If um, any of you, after we'll, we'll talk about the content of the book, we'll, we'll, we have a kind of like a few alternative plans. So if any of you wants to bring a dream they had and Andy will help you with the interpretation, we can do that. If not, Andy has some recordings of... Um, consultations that he did with um with therapists uh who agreed to uh for us to use it for this meeting so we can do that as well so andy welcome and thanks for getting back with us my pleasure thanks for uh having me yeah so andy uh before we get to dreams i want to talk about third part of your book and um you start by saying that most therapists would not follow up on this advice, would not go and do the things that you suggest to do in the third part of the book. Why is that? Uh, I think the main problem is because of social media and iPhones and devices and the distractions are, uh, you know, they're everywhere all the time. And so what and it, it's really sort of a mindful practice and we teach that and I know maybe we all try to practice that. Um, so maybe you know maybe I should have been a little more optimistic optimistic, but it requires you to sort of uh, really um, take time and sort of create this sort of uh, sacredness in preparation yeah. to actually start to work with this internal self, whether you want to call it your soul, you want to call it dreams, you want to call it your inner self, whatever you want to call it. But so, and the more uh, kind of mindful approach um, versus I'm just going to put my cell phone next to the, the nightstand that if I have a dream, I'll just type in a few right. words. And this is like my document of my dream life right it's it's right. it's not even in it's not even in the three-dimensional world it's in yeah. a two-dimensional world you don't even bring it in out into the real world right so it goes from this eternal world of your dream and then it's sort of okay and we'll bring it into the two-dimensional but not the three-dimensional and i think it needs to be in the three-dimensional world you know, but but I'm a child of the industrial age, right? Right. Like some of you guys have never known the world without an iPhone. So, you know, maybe I'm speaking out of line. But yeah, but no, it, no, I, 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 um, I'm glad you bring it up. You brought it up in a book. I don't think you should have been more optimistic. I think we're moving in one direction, and this direction is to be less and less mindful as a result of having these devices um you know you and i talked um you know uh, quite a few times about uh stolen focus that that book uh about this guy who's a reporter who's like on twitter nonstop, and then he just disconnects from devices for for several months which is a really interesting experience really good book to re read I'm I'm really interested in that topic. Uh, I read, you know, deep work and digital minimalism and a lot of books in in this category. And unfortunately, we're moving in in one direction, and it it's to be more distracted and less mindful. So I I actually I am um, I appreciate that you brought it up in the book. Um, I think we we need these reminders because otherwise we kind of like tend to go to the path of less least resistance and it's just to be on our devices all the time yeah one important thing in that book so in my i didn't used to have to tell people when i do my basic training to stay off yourself but now i yeah. do because right, I, right. people were just they'd be in the first row 
doom scrolling. Like, yeah, oh, I can multitask. No, you can't. That's no, you not, can't. That's a co- no. computer's multitask. No, humans don't. You're not humans. Uh, humans, humans. What humans do is task switching, and task yeah, switching has a cost. Uh, yes, so when I you know. task switch, you really can't really get back to what you're doing. You're you're losing power. You're losing your ability to concentrate and to focus. Um. Good. So you you recommend using like uh, old school kind of journal and and the pen, and then um, it's to kind of keep it by your bed as opposed to like keeping your phone next to you when you sleep. That's like the worst thing you can do for your sleep. Um, yeah. So- yeah. And I like you know, and to talk about the journal. You should go and I mean, you could buy them on Amazon, but you go into a store and now even Barnes and Noble have one. They still have a lot of journals. So it's important how it feels like I, like my wife bought me this beautiful journal here. Like like this is like awesome, right? It's handmade. This is mm. leather. This woman made this by hand in Texas. Right. But I hate it because I have to wrestle with it. Like the paper yeah. is so thick. So I only use it to sort of document the dream. I'll put it in there and do a little, but that's not my my daily journal. You know, it opens, it stays open. It's, you know, it's not real. It's like, it, I like the way it feels, right? Okay, so, so this is all good kind of intro. Let's talk about dreams and how we can document our dreams or how we can help our clients or guide them to document their dreams and how what should we tell our clients when we want them to document their dreams yeah i usually just say i'm interested in dreams dreams often can help me understand where we are in the process and i can i can also maybe help you understand um so it's nice if you have a dream but if you don't want to be bothered they don't you know i don't insist and then yeah. I usually say, but I don't remember my dreams. That they all, everyone says that. And if you haven't yeah. been paying attention to them or recording them, then you don't remember them. You don't pay attention to them. If you, you might not had a dream, I had a nightmare. You wake up in the morning, you, unless it's a really horrible nightmare, you forget about it. But once you put a notepad next to your bed, yeah, you're sort of sending this inner dreamer the message mm-hmm. like, Hey, I'm going to pay attention now. And mm-hmm. the inner dreamer has just been waiting to help out, right? And so you will, uh, you'll start to remember your dreams. And, you know, and, and so not, it doesn't always work, but like, man, 90% of the time, you put a notebook by your bed in a day or two or three, you're going to, you'll have a dream to remember to work on. And then the more you work on them, the more dreams you'll get. I mean, I remember looking back at some of mine when I was around your age, uh, my journals, and there, I would like document seven or eight dreams in one night. I mean, it was like, once you start to do that, and you don't need to you know, work with seven or eight dreams in a night. You know, you just mm-hmm. pick one, looks interesting to me. Let me look, look see what, you know, what this might be saying to me. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, so, you know, the, just put a notebook by your bed and being sort of interested in, in what's going to uh, what's going to happen. And hopefully you'll have a dream. And, and m- most of the time uh, you will. Yeah. Yeah. I so in the book, you're talking about different. First of all, let's start with a b- beginning, middle and end. What does that look like? A, just a structure of a dream. Yeah, so uh, not all dreams, but most dreams. And this is um, uh, Marie von uh, von Franz. She's like Jung, Jung's like one of her first client, his first students. It's from her book uh, on dreaming. I think it's called uh, the dream. And she sort of explains there's like dreams have they like in three parts. There's the beginning, the exposition, then there's the development, what's going to happen, and then there's usually a resolution. And mm-hmm. of course, of course, it doesn't always follow that. You oftentimes, you know, it doesn't end. The end is that it's not, it didn't end. Um, and so, the, the the first part, the exposition, it's usually the first line of a dream. Mm-hmm. It's usually the, the exposition is the curtain comes up. Here's the characters, and here's the scene. That's part one. Okay. Here's the scene, right? The next is okay. Then there's some sort of development, some movement, some action, or not. And that's mm-hmm. sort of the middle part of the dream. And then, you know, there's a the, the end. Then the end often is 
a twist of fate, especially on meaningful dreams. Um, I share a dream um, in my course. Uh, my friend Corey, uh, we had a number of discussions about her dream life. And so this very first one, she's being chased by these two guys. And so... Mm -hmm. And and people think dreams are weird, but if I had a nickel for everybody who I you know talked about dreams with, they had a dream where two guys were chasing them. It's yeah, like yeah, a mm -hmm. cliche. It's like a blues lick for dreamers. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's like I'm being chased by two guys. They break into her house. She hides in the closet, and that's mm -hmm. the dream, right? And then uh, then a few months later, she says, "I'm brushing my teeth," and all mm. of a sudden, this, this internal voice says to me. Those intruders are you, right? So this mm. is like, she goes, what? Why was I attacking myself, right? So that's the twist of the dream. So if she's not paying attention to the dream, she's not remembering that dream, she doesn't get this data. Like, hey, you're not the one hiding in the closet. It's the intruders. That's you, you know. So then, okay, so what is that? How is how am I intruding in my life? Or why am I hiding in the closet? And I'm hiding in the closet and now I'm coming after me. Why are you yeah, because you got, you know, and so we, you know, I could talk about what that all meant to her, but mm -hmm. it sort of opens up this discussion and it changed her life. Like she's yeah. changed her life. You know, she was hiding in the closet in this bare, desolate house. And her and her well, part of her is saying, get out of this house. You need to go like your world needs to expand. Enough of this sitting in this here. Let's get things moving. And so she got, is starting a more public life in her professional life. Right. So, yeah. But, you know, so maybe she knows that. Maybe you can go into therapy and know that. But the dream like lights up that interest. And if you don't pay yeah. attention to them. You don't get that. And it's free. It doesn't cost anything. Right. You know? um, so. Yeah. So so let's talk about EMDR. So you talk about the six stages of transformation and how the dreams kind of correlate with each of these. Not necessarily each, right? Because some of the stages you combine together. But can you talk about that? Like how dreams show you what stage uh, a person is in when, when yes. they're doing the work. Right. And yeah, and that's why it's really easy to sort of understand, like, you know, a dream as a young, as an EMDR therapist. Like if you talk to Jungian people, they're talking about, they like granularly go through every little thing and it gets to be a little overwhelming and maybe impractical. Um, but yeah. for us, for us, you know, the first, usually like those six stages for you that don't know, it's like avoidance is first because we avoid therapy. We avoid, you know, looking internally at ourselves, our flaws. Yeah. And, and then the second is, okay, I give up, I surrender. And you have to surrender to EMDR. And then there's the dismantling of the old way. So destruction of the, the negative core belief. And once you do that, then there's chaos and confusion sets in, loss of identity, and then a rebirth happens and the authentic self starts to show up and the client figures that out. Right. So those are like the six stages. But basically, the, the dream themes fall into and first death and destruction, dying, houses are burning down. So it's really important if you do in transformation to work, you got to tell your client, listen, you might have some nightmares and dreams and it's temporary. Don't be afraid of these. If that happens, it's just normal. Because when you're, because the, the the dreamer is just um, reflecting this inner kind of destruction that we're killing the old self, so we're in destruction. Right. And, and the you, dream you correlate that, that to killing the old self. You correlate it to the killing basically the old negative cognition, right? Yeah, yeah. Like if it's an I don't matter, and we want to get to I do matter then, you know, you're going to be in destruction mode and it's not. And if you don't tell your client, they're going to have a nightmare. And then I don't right. want to do that here anymore. I'm not doing it. I don't right. want to do it. So if yeah. you tell or, them, or they just don't board, show then up. you look like a, yeah. And, and cause I've had trainees forget to tell them and they have a nightmare and then they don't want to do EMDR anymore. We have to, right. you know, and if you them. tell them, you th they think you're a genius because right. uh, that's yeah. what you write in the book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, you can't lose. I don't, yeah. don't like, you know, I don't emphasize it some. I just say, look, you might have some vivid dreams, maybe a nightmare, nothing to be concerned about. I don't want to like, you know, go on and on about nightmares. 
Yeah. But I make sure that they hear that. And then, you know, among other things that can happen, you know, when we do our closure spiel. Yeah. You know, but, yeah. And I but, think, I think it's very common for people, especially in the, when they first start reprocessing, it's very common. That's my kind of my biased on observation that when people start the processing, oftentimes they have very vivid dreams and or nightmares. Yeah, because EMDR stirs up stuff quickly, like fast, right? It's not like talk therapy, right. as we all as we all know, right? Okay, yeah, so, so that's let's, first, let's that's keep the first, talking about the, these phases. Yeah. So that's the first theme: destruction, houses burning down, people caught in a storm, you know, dead bodies around, kind of creepy, terrible stuff like that. And then once that starts to break apart, and now usually the client is confused about who they are so then the dreams are about i don't know where my car is i don't know how i got here i can't get a hold of my wife or my brother i, I don't know how much you know and they're just lost and confused they don't know where they are how they got there where they're going none of that and that's pretty yeah. common common kind of dream as well that that theme and then then you know there's they start this uh it starts to open up to some uh, like these rebirth dreams right and that's usually you know it could be like you know springtime there could be symbols of uh you know even people who are atheists they dream it's christmas and they don't even they're not christian or uh, you know i was just talking about ryan had this dream of a manger and, and mm -hmm. he saw you know, he he was sitting in he was he was in a manger uh, as an adult, um, and uh, he's he, I mean he's not really he wasn't raised a Catholic or anything, but you know we know what that symbolizes. You don't have to be Christian to know a manger is, is Jesus, whether you believe in him or not, represents you know uh, the the new hope, the new way, the new life. Uh, yeah. Or same, it's the same thing with Easter is like a resurrection, you know, this new life. If you have those kind of religious dreams, but it can also just be like. Uh, sometimes there's just like toddlers around children and, and animals that are just sort of born because this new way is it's the clients just kind of learning how to navigate. I matter. They don't know how to matter. And now I'm trying to figure it out. So they're like children trying to figure out this new way. So there's often toddlers or little animals around. I mean, it's really common. Those themes are common. So I like dreams because if I, if somebody, if I think, you know, we still need a lot of dismantling work and they have a dream about that they're confused and, and, and lost, I'm like, oh, so we're farther along than I thought we were. You know, we're all, we're kind of losing our identity. So, you know, so sometimes the, the dreams are like signposts and, and pretty, pretty predictable um, in EM, in an EMDR setting, you know? Like if somebody yeah. came in on the street and asked me, hey, I had this dream, what is it? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I know, but if I need to know something about the person, um, but usually I don't interpret it. Like I was, we were talking earlier, the first thing, somebody has a dream, first thing I say is, mm, what do you make of that? That's right, uh, right. In the book, you bring an example of the cow, for example, for that for most Americans, the cow, is a symbol of like it's our food, right? That's what we eat. Right, the right. cow is like a burger or a steak, and right, right. you know, in, in India, it's a sacred animal. So it's not. But how does that work, Andy? With because Jung had this notion of universal symbols, right? Yeah. So uh, yeah, a cow isn't an archetypal symbol. It's it's right. a right. I was just demonstrating a symbol, but not an archetypal. So an yeah. archetypal symbol would be, um, you know, blood, you know, uh, serpents. If you have a serpent, a sword, uh, water, you know, verb sense you unconscious usually. So the more the, the, those are more arch archetypal, where they sort of mean the same thing across cultures and generations. So they're they're powerful. Um, yeah. Um, how, can you talk more about what do you do with the dream? So clients, let's say clients recorded dreams and they're in the midst of their EMDR journey. How do you bring it together? How do you bring it into work? Do you process the dreams? I know like um, Laura Purnell, for example, recommends targeting dreams. So it's a way to like, you can make, you can take the dream and basically ask, the same question that you ask in, in standard protocol, what's the worst part of the dream? What's the worst image? What's the negative thought? What's, you know, all that going through the standard protocol. How do you integrate dreams 
into the work when we're uh, doing EMDR with our clients? Yeah, so I think at the very end of that chapter, it shows you how to take a dream and turn it into a pro procedural steps, you know? Yeah. So, so I mean, you don't always have to do it. Uh, it's a lot of times with nightmares, if, if the nightmare is recurrent, you want to get to, you know, what's the worst part of the nightmare? Negative cognition, you know, I'm in danger for something. The, the emotions, I'm, a, I'm afraid, scared, yeah. terrified, whatever. And then you can kind of work from that. The thing about uh, a nightmare, though, is sometimes if you're just dismantling the negative cognition and you're not done, you could target that nightmare until the cows come home. And until you actually dismantle that, it might change a little, but a lot of times it's not going to give you any answers. So, um, it, you know, sometimes it does and sometimes it moves to other places and then sometimes it doesn't. Uh, and it doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It just means a client has to make progress in their life. You know, yeah. like you don't get a rebirth dream if you're avoidant. And let me just talk a little bit. I didn't talk about that's like really the first dream is like avoidant dreams. Mm -hmm. So. So one example, again, Corey was, uh, taught, we, we discussed one of her clients who is a hypochondriac and doesn't want to let go of these imaginary illnesses. So he has this dream where he walks into this theater and uh, there's not too many people in it and somebody shoots him a couple of times mm. and he gets hit and he's down and he goes down, but he's got a bulletproof vest on. So I'm okay, but I didn't get hurt, right? So you think, well, that's good, right? No, that's bad. You have to die in order to be reborn, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's like a classic avoidant dream. So you're protected. You got this shell. No one could get in here. And that's mm -hmm. the avoidant sort of, then that's an avoidant dream. And, and um, another one, and maybe you guys have had this dream where your teeth are falling out, uh, where, you know, sometimes people have that. I've had that dream. So the teeth are sort of this barricade to protect your, your mouth, make sure it's, you know, so nothing could get in and sort of attack your soul was the old old understanding of that. So when your teeth are falling out or in your hand, then you're vulnerable, right? So normally that's bad. Like somewhere in your life, you have some vulnerability. You need to kind of examine that. Except if you're dismantling the old core belief and your teeth fall off, that's kind of, oh, you're you're allowing yourself to be vulnerable. So in that context, that's not a bad dream. But in a, other context, it, it could be a bad dream, and you need to kind of do some introspection about yourself. So just because this symbol means this here, it may not mean that there. So it's, it's like when somebody says this is what this means, mm, you got to be careful because it's really... It, it, it's not that clear and cut and everybody likes it to be that what does this mean yeah. what does that mean and well often it means but not certainly not always you know yeah yeah um so i'm wondering before we ask our community members to turn their videos and audio on and join us is there anything else in the context of how to bring these dreams into our EMDR work that you want to share? You know, when somebody just brings it in and, you know, just like with, I uh, explained with Corey, where she gets this insight, okay, well, that's grist for the mill, man. Okay, what do you think that means, Corey? What is, why on earth, you know, you're hiding and then, okay, a part of you doesn't want to be hiding. And and so that actually just opens up this conversation about, I need to get out. I probably need to teach more. I have to have more public thing, but I'm afraid of that. Oh, you are. Why, what are you afraid of? Well, I don't really like public speaking, you know. And, okay, well, let's do a future template on what might you do a public speaking about. And so now you can employ EMDR to help her fulfill whatever that is. And you know, and maybe we would have come to that, she would have come to that conclusion without that dream. But certainly when you have this internal dream, it, it's meaningful to the client. You know, it's like EMDR, when they have an adaptive shift, you could tell them the same words that are coming out of their mouth. But when they experience it, it's like on steroids, they believe it. So it's right. more, more powerful. And and I have this quote, I'm about, I have this quote that Morton Kelsey said about dreams, so I just want to share this, uh, you know, it's yeah. um, so a uh, Morton um, was sort of the, the person that got me into dreams in the seventies. And it's, it's a bit of a story. So I won't, 
bore you with it right now, but he's a Jungian analyst and a Episcopal minister, and he's written about 50 books. And if you want to check out some of Morton Kelsey's books, uh, Inner Work is a really good one. The Other Side of Solitude is a is a good one. There's a bunch of bunch of great books, but some of them there most of them have some Christian element because he's a, a minister, but some of yeah. them don't. Some of them are just kind of Jungian. So, but I would check him out and John Sanford. That's those guys are, you know, taught me a lot. And Robert Johnson, too. Um, if you have my book, they're all in the back of my book. Um yeah. so anyway, but so Morton says, like from a, a from some deep center of reality, a dreamer within speaks to us. Uh, this reality knows everything about us has wisdom greater than ours and provides these nightly dramas for our transformation. So these dramas tell us who we are, where we have been, where we have strayed from the path and how we can get back on the path where our destiny is supposed to lead us. So why would you ignore that? Why would you ignore that? Right. I mean, it, and 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 then in my my book, I I think it's in my book or my training, I I I take out dreamer and put EMDR, like from some deep center of reality. EMDR gets us to speak within, right? So it's it's like the same goal. So yeah. the, the dream just just gives us more access to more ways for the client to have an internal experience and, and that's something you know we talk about you know i talk about you know carl rogers i didn't know this but you know he's the person center guy but he he did this research and he said clients don't learn from our theories or from what we say or you know from this and that what they learn from is their own internal experience is what changes them and so right. he said he started working with dreams because that's an internal experience so he started to value dreams more so yeah. and then he has an it creates an internal experience so it's it's almost like a no-brainer right it doesn't right cost I, any I think I think that both EMDR and dreams help us access the unconscious, which, uh, you know, obviously we have a lot of material there that we usually just tend to kind of ignore. But like you said from Morton Kelsey's quote, there's some, some, some inner wisdom there that we can access. Um, yeah, dreams are incapable of deceit. So they're yeah. giving you the truth. Uh, is, yeah. You understand the language. Like if I'm fl flying around in the air, okay, I'm in. I'm inflated in some way. I am like need to get my butt on the ground and get grounded again because I'm just flying around. I'm not. People don't fly. We're not supposed to fly, right? So that's yeah. not good. So uh, immediately I know. Okay, where am I being an asshole? And try to mm -hmm. look at that and see if I need to make some some adjustments so it's it's not complicated it just it's like just learning a new skill it takes a little bit of time and you know and yeah. it's and the best way to learn is to start working on your dreams you know right right so speaking of that i want to invite our um community members to turn their videos and audio on and first if you have any questions for andy he's ready to take your questions but also if uh, if you have any dreams that you had recently um, and you want to share and kind of go over it, we can do it only if you feel comfortable, no pressure. And that part, if you choose to do that, we can either record it uh, or stop the recording. Now, let me just be clear about that. If you choose to uh, let us record it, we're gonna make it available only to the members of the MDR learning community. We're not gonna put it on YouTube for like a searchable thing. We are going to put it on YouTube as unlisted video, which means that only people with direct link will have access to it, which means only the members of the MDR learning community. So with that, all that said, uh, please, um, <clears throat> unmute yourselves or uh, reveal yourselves and um, ask some questions. We still have people joining us. If there are no questions, Andy, you can, um, I don't know, let's wait a few more seconds. Maybe someone will change your mind, but if not, Andy, do you want to share your screen and show your uh the dream work that you did with ryan yeah yes so i with ryan i have a, a 
this this is a dream of his it's it's actually two dreams and they do he does use these sort of archetypal symbols you know it's not a cow so and uh so we can play those i also have our discussion of it and, and interpretation of it uh, it's a separate video maybe i could call up but uh, let me just um, see if i can listen to, to ryan You guys see that okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dreams. This is in the, um, and uh, the first dream, this is, this is a few weeks ago, um, and uh, very kind of busy time. Anyway, I won't get into the backstory necessarily uh, now, but I'll just tell you the dream. So in the dream, I'm in the, I'm um, in a house, and the house is uh, dark, but a uh, but marble, very like beautiful house. But it looks like it went, that it's being renovated. Like there, it looks like it had been on fire, and now it's beautiful. But okay, so just, just briefly for everybody, the house represents the self, the ho the whole of the personality of the person. So with Corey, you know, be attacking, running into this house. That was herself, and it was sort of desolately furnished, right? And that's why, you know, you got to come out, you got to make more of your life, right? So th this is Ryan's uh, self. So he's got this house under construction or just uh, had some burning going on, uh, and he's in, he's like 37, so he's like in the middle of his life. And this is a real common kind of dream for someone his age. It's like still, there's like painter's tape and plastic in okay. very second sections, right? Yeah. And then yeah. and then I'm um and then there's there's a like a lot of people in the house and um I feel like I'm as this sound I don't how it sounds but I sort of felt like I was this middle age it felt like I was Martin Luther King's wife, right? In the dream. Like not literally, but like I was it felt like I was some social advocate, like black woman, like middle aged black woman. And I was like and there's two um there's a there, there's like two factions of all these people in the house like one you're either on one side or the other and they're and they're arguing not violent but like they're disagreeing and i stand up in the middle as this woman and i i start crying like so uh emotional and i'm basically just saying we have to come together we have to unify this has to we can't be we can't be against each other you know kind of a message of peace that's why i don't know like a like you'd hear at a rally for social justice or something mm -hmm. and and then um and but i remember like you know the tears and and like them sort of pausing and listening to me but then the dream ended <clears throat> and so i called my sister i wrote it down because i did the same thing that you had suggested as far as like the pen that is made and the stuff and so i had the details which is good because <clears throat> i think i would have missed a lot of the, the my, minute stuff you know certainly but anyway it would stuck with me so I, I i called my sister and she's like somebody i just it's like we bounce the stuff off she reads a lot of similar things um but she just said something about um my feminine side she said she thought it, there was something about that and um and was, so she was talking about her feminine set or you no, about, I, she, she you. said maybe there's something there about the feminine side like that was all she said um i mean my she doesn't proclaim to be a dream expert but she just you know one of my confidants so i was like you know what i don't know i have no idea what it means you know and i was like man you know maybe we'll bring it up to dr dobo or or something and um she was so we were talking about it and then i ended up um thinking more about that you know and obviously like i said i'm reading Jung, and 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 so i was thinking man i'm gonna take this weekend because i've been really busy like i've been in melbourne i had been in tampa i had been doing like all over you know how it is and i was not really doing a lot of creative stuff and and i was kind of feeling isolated from some of my really good friends so if you if you're listening um so ryan's taking this dream seriously right and that's another important thing take the dream seriously and he is so he's okay i had this dream. let me talk to somebody i'm going to talk to my sister blah 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 she gives her some ideas and then he starts to think i sure have been busy lately i've been really busy and and so he's sort of making this self-correction in his life because of his dream and you'll see how the the, ne the next dream he has reflects that self-correction. So 
just like so my, my kids, my wife, I'm good. My, my, you know, but like, I, I took it as an invitation, you know, to like maybe be creative and go surfing and do some bad art or write some bad poetry or something. And, um, and I did, you know, for the most part did that. And then I had a dream and, um, it couldn't have been more than a week later after that weekend. And the dream was I'm in the same house, but this time it's me, 37 year old me, like, as I see myself, no one's there and it's daytime and it's peaceful. And, you know, still, still like with the remodel, like it's it just now there's light now it's like illuminated and I'm just kind of walking around taking stock of the house and I kind of like it. Like I'm like proud of the house, like, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and just like, like the way it's going. And I, and I feel invited, the doors open, front doors open and it's a beautiful day. And I just decide I'm going to walk outside. Like, like there's nobody out there. I'm just feeling called to walk outside. So I walk outside and then I, I get to, there's like woods and I get to the woods and there's a manger and um, like, like you'd see in a, you know, like a nativity scene. And I just think that looks really comfortable. And I lie down in it in the fetal position. And when I do that, I look up and the Virgin Mary's looking down at me. And it's like, I have this tattoo. It's like the, the Guadalupe uh, one, yeah, you know, that version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. And, and then I look up and there's like light coming down on me and I feel really good. And it feels like a lot of love. And I say, I look up to say, thank you. And then her face changes. It's like almost illuminated. And, and then it changes to my mom's face and my sister's face and my grandma's face and my wife's face and all these females, um, maybe my aunts that helped raise me. And then I woke up. Wow. So that was the, the, the dream. And, and I haven't had anything like that since. Um, I have some thoughts. You're about not going to have one of those for a long time. That's a big dream. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's I, like, you will yeah. never forget but that. But the dream. point of that yeah. is that he made these changes in his life. I'm too busy. So he took some time off. He spent time writing bad poetry and surfing, connecting with his friends and talking to his sister, spending more time journaling or whatever. And then he gets this dream where his house isn't burning down. He's not some black woman crying because people were split. I'm not split anymore. I sort of got the message and I'm more on sort of this, you know, maybe a more balanced path, you know, and, and, you know, it, it, and and he he immediately responded to the burning the burning and the black conflict crying we got to get together like my busy self business self and my spiritual so we sort of got to like we got to unite we can't be at each other and so he stopped it and so he gets this dream you know yeah okay um last chance for our people okay. join us to ask some questions so I have a dream I can share. All righty. Yes, please. Can you hear me? Okay. Wait, yeah. who, who is, is I, I'm not sure. Who Rosemary. Is, it's Rosemary. Hey, so Rosemary, are you, are you okay with us recording it and sharing it only yes, with our because, community members? Yes, because I'm a community mem member and I'm not running for political office. So it's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. okay. So you I want had to turn to... your uh, Rosemary your video on. No, is that okay? Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, okay. yeah. That that's totally fine. Because I'm going to be recorded. That's the only reason. Yeah. No worries. No worries. Okay. okay. So I had a dream where I was in a parking lot, and this man in a pickup truck was really angry, and he was at an ATM. Um, he was pulling into the bank drive to the ATM and he kept backing up and hitting his truck and backing up and hitting his truck and he was blocking everybody from getting in and I got out of my car and I put my hands up and I said to him hey I just want to get to the ATM so then the dream changed where this other man is next to me and he's using a computer and I'm using a computer and he bumped into my computer so I went around and I said, hey, you're bumping into my computer. And then he said to me, he had on a police uniform, but it was very light colored. And he had um, white hair, like in a crew cut, which I associate with the TV show. Um, it, it's about an angel and a demon. And he had his hair like the angel. Okay. And he said to me, you are the connector you are the connector. And I said, 
yes, yes, I Yes, I am. And I felt very happy. And that was the end of the dream. Wow. Well, that's, what do you make of that? Well, <laughs> I make I make of it as I had a part one and a part two. So right. there was the anger and the blocking part. And there was the part where I got on my car and I was trying to communicate with the angry person. Like, just we just want to get to the ATM. And I could see he was destroying his car. And then the second part was, first, there was a little conflict with this person. And then he gave me this great message, which I was, I just thought he was sort of a spiritual figure in a way. And then I, I thought it was great. And I applied it to this EMDR case I had. And I said to myself, well, I'm just the connector. I'm just going to connect this client with this other great resource. But in, in real life, that wasn't true. I'm working with her. I'm not, she didn't move on to this great resource. So this connector thing, I had to rethink it to um, being a connector in many ways. Okay, so like in your real life, so you kind of associated with a client, a specific client, Rosemary? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And, and then, is, is it in, does it make sense in any other broader context? Yes, I had to abandon the idea of one person. And I said, well, there, in therapy, there's so many ways that you're a connector. You connect people with all kinds of things, their strengths, you help them, you know, walk through hell, you know, and everything. Absolutely. So I started looking at it in a different, broader way. What about the the blocking part? Is that wow. would you think it's just because the client was difficult, like not letting you connect? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It could okay. be. Yeah. Cause yeah. That I mean that's I love when you get like a short and sweet message at the end of a dream. Like yeah, you're really. the there, man. That's like, I, that's almost like, um, you know, it's like your why. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, lead with why. Like my why is to transform lives. My yeah. my, my why is I'm a connector. You know, whatever that, however that interprets. So, right. Uh, yeah, and you don't usually, you don't usually get this stuff from your frontal lobe. You know, it has to be this other part of us, this more transcendent part that we all have within us. Um, so, yeah, that, that's a great dream. I don't think you need me to help you with that. <laughs> Yeah, well, the first part with the person bashing up their truck, I mean, that could be me too, um, you know, and kind of blocking myself and getting angry about things because I was working out something at the time I had that dream. I was working out this problem I was having with friends. So it could have been part of that too. Yeah, so one thing that like I might, like if it was me to expand on, I always want to know, okay, so why did you have to get to the ATM? Why didn't you have to get to pick up, why didn't you have to go pick up your lunch? Why didn't you have to get to a friend? Cause they're waiting for you. It could have been a million things that I have to get to anything. Right. And, mm -hmm. but it's, I had to get to the ATM. Right. So I always am curious about why did the unconscious pick that? Oh, and yeah. I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer to that. I mean, it could be like, you know, yeah, I have to, I have to get, I have to get to where, you know, I'm, you know, successful, where the money's at. Like, it, right. you know, uh, it could, it could mean something like that. So those are, th those are like questions. I like, okay, why the ATM and why not like, you know, dinner or something or a friend or, you right. know, like I, I, I would talk about in my book of a. A, a woman who's wounded by her father in the shower with a circular saw. Like, that's odd. Like, why did the unconscious pick a circular saw instead of a knife or a blade? You're going to, you know, wound somebody in the leg. She knew right away. She knew immediately. Oh, because he's like, you know, tells me the same things over and over. It's circular breathing. He's a narcissist. So it's just over and over and over. The same wound. Oh, so it makes perfect sense to her. Oh, I know why it was a circular saw, but but I don't know why, right? So mm -hmm. I mean, those are just if you want to, you know, think about exploring your dreams a little, you know, it, you you'll find that if you just do it, it's, it really can be interesting and provocative and really helpful. 
and you sort of have a, a better sense of so. And I'm not going to, there's another thing that happened. Ryan is sort of like my apprentice. I never had an apprentice, but like we sort of have these, you know, we see the world from the same view. He really does anything, you know, he's, I'm sort of his mentor. Um, and so when my son died in August and in October, I mean, I was really mad. I mean, when they say, you know, anger is part of grief, it's not anger. It's like mythic fucking godlike rage. It's not anger. So, and Ryan had a dream for me. I talk about it in my book that I wasn't ready to have because I was too angry. And it's a really beautiful dream uh, about my son. So if you don't pay attention to dreams, I don't get that, you know. Anyway. Thank, Thank you, you, Rosemary, for sharing. Uh, Thanks, Rosemary. Any, yeah, any final questions for Andy? I think we're running out of time to share another dream, but just if there are any questions. Yafa? Yeah, um, first of all, thank you so much. I'm just really engaged right now and just my wheels are spinning, but um, I'm curious if you ever work creatively. So I also, um, I also practice drama therapy. So maybe this is influencing the question, but I know you have a background in music and I'm right. curious if you explore, if you ever explore dreams creatively and how you might do that. I don't know what you mean. You mean like to draw With them like or creative or art techniques. I'm just thinking about like the right brain and like how to kind of explore and kind of stay in that zone. Yeah. I, I mean, in my book, I, I talk about, there's a, there's a dream. I, there's a, a poem I wrote when I was sort of in that chaos and confusion stage in my thirties. And, and it's a poem that sort of, and it's based on a dream. Um, and so, yeah, so certainly I've written a lot of poems in those, in those thir in the thirties where you're sort of figuring, you know, it's really the hero's journey, you know? And so there's a lot of, I've done, I've done a lot of poetry. I'm not an artist, so I can't draw. And I don't think I've ever written any music about, um, about a, a poem, a, a dream, but I've, it, they've inspired a number of uh, poems. I don't do that anymore, but I did do that. when I was maybe your age or maybe a little older because you sort of got to get this out. I mean, yeah. you know, when you're in that 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 transition, it's just like stuff just happened. Like with Ryan, he had this dream and he has another archetypal dream and he's writing poetry and like he's like in it. And I remember being yeah. in it, you know, and that's kind of like a midlife kind of moving through this really intense period of a uh, of life. So, yeah, and if and if I haven't, you should can certainly try, yeah. Uh, you know, feel free, whatever, sort of, whatever, you know, be creative in any, any way. I just, yeah. you know, I just read a thing by Kurt Vonnegut. Uh, he's wrote some, some classroom, wrote him a letter and he wrote back and he just told, to, listen, write a bad poem, right? Do this, do any sort of creative thing, you know, and it was, you know, make a face in your mashed potatoes. And, you know, it was a really kind of funny, he's, a, he's an interesting artist too, so. Yeah, I'm a I'm a I'm a fan of it's like my books are not yeah. like left brain, you know, they're they're right brain, you know, like I'm talking to you is how the books sound, you know. So also I'm if really you, excited because the kind of the connection of the hero's journey, there's just so much opportunity there to explore in so many right. ways. You could I don't know if you've ever brought in a guide, but it's just like once there's a yeah, yeah. story, a narrative, there's so much to do. I'm like excited. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You do like Jung's active imagination where you, and it really works well with the bilateral stimulation is you just go into the dream and you can talk to any character in the dream. You could ask any question and you're kind of in that mindful state with the stimulation going on. And it's it's uh, powerful, powerful stuff, you know. It's like you know, we do the inner child, we do that stuff, but but we don't really talk much about the dream component of it. And and it's you know, it's powerful. I mean, really powerful. Thank also, you. if you guys want to email, if you, I have a little handbook. Like so, if you have my book, it says you know, here's the exposition. Write the exposition. Write the body. So I have like a PDF of if you wanted to you know, print it out and just start to work with a dream 
and the symbols and just kind of figure it out. And so my book is sort of tells you how to do it. And then I have a PDF if you guys want to want that. You can just send me an email. It's at Andrew Dobo at Gmail. And I'll be happy to send you that. And you can print it out and work with a dream. Maybe that'll get you to get a dream going. And then if you um, have any questions at all, you, know, you can just always email me. Um, you know, you have my email, you have a dream. I'm always interested. If you have a dream and you want to share it and let me videotape it, maybe I could use it in my course. I like doing that if you want to do that. Uh, always looking for new resources. Like Ryan was kind enough and that's very teachable. You know, so it's nice yeah. to have those kind of real life examples. Instead of me talking about the dream, you can actually see how we kind of process it. And, and really, the first question, what do you make of that? And you'd be surprised how you don't have to say much more than that. <laughs> the client kind of gets a real idea. And then, you know, there are just some basic things like the ego is usually a vehicle. The house is the self. Those two things, like the vehicle, you could be on a bike. That's the ego. It's not your ego is not very strong. Or I, I'm in a red Corvette. I just crashed it into a wall. Okay, you're inflated. You know, so the vehicle is, is you know, so there's some basic symbols that are in the book. They talk about some of the basic things. And, and so you don't really need to know much more than that. And then the more you do, the better you get at it. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. Thank you for being generous with your uh, stuff. So I posted your um, email address in the chat so if you want to yeah. email andy directly you can email him um and yeah thanks andy again for taking the time talking to us thanks everyone thank for joining you. thanks for inviting me and thank you all i appreciate it yeah thank you so much you're welcome you guys all take care bye